delayed start of the October 22, 2002 meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, we have a light complement of board members tonight. We are missing uh, Mr. Keneally, Mr. LaPlante, Mr. Tranfaglia, and present is um, Ms. Jordan, Ms. Miller, Dr. Chapmas, um, and myself, uh, David Backer. Um, the first item on our agenda is the approval of the minutes of September 24, 2002. However, two of the board members who are here tonight were absent on September 24, uh, Ms. Miller and Ms. Jordan, which leaves only Dr. Chapmas and myself to approve those minutes, which is not enough to be able to do that. So um, if I could have a motion simply to defer approval of the minutes of September 4, 2002 until the next regularly scheduled meeting of the board. So moved. Um, second. Second it. And um, all those in favor of the motion? The motion is approved. Four in favor, zero opposed. The minutes will be, the minutes of the September 24 meeting will be tabled until our next regularly scheduled meeting. Next item on our agenda is old business, and I see none on the agenda. Uh, taking us to new business, we have one item of new business, that is to hear the appeal of Scott and Lori Dorrance, 10 Elmwood Road, tax map U03-22 for a variance of 1.9% from the allowable 25% maximum building coverage to construct a 110 square foot addition. And Mr. Dorrance is here with us this evening. Yes. Uh, Mr. Dorrance, why don't you step up to the podium, if you would, please. And before we get started, um, I'll point out to you that under the CAPE zoning ordinance, uh, the board may grant a variance only with an affirmative vote of four members of the board. And our rules um, state under section five of, of our local rules, it says that in the event there are only four board members present to hear an application for a variance, the, applica the applicant shall be given the option to table the matter to the next regularly scheduled meeting of the board. So we want to present you with that option. Um, since there are only four of us tonight, um, that means that if any one of us would not vote in favor of your application, that it would be denied. So if, you want, to, if you want to increase your odds of approval, um, you have the right to ask that it be tabled, um, and it will be tabled um, until our next regularly scheduled meeting. I'm willing to go ahead now. Okay. Um, Bruce, is there anything that you'd like to give us by way of background on this before Mr. Dorrance gets started? Um, other than the fact that he, the, the uh, advertisement of 1.9% for 110 square foot over the 20, 1.9 percent over the 25 percent. Uh, though you were, he was already non-conforming. He was already over the the 25 percent, but it was because it was before the ordinance. So I, I didn't I didn't get into that. But Scott may want to point that out that you're not. It's not a full 1.9. It's somewhat less than that increase from what's already existing. But the advertisement had to show the, the total figure over the 25 percent. Okay. Mr. Dorrance, the floor is yours. Um, I was already grandfathered for 1.1 percent. I was at 26.1 based on the um, plot card in my file. So we would like to add on another 47 square foot to a deck, an existing deck that's already there, which would come down and would add 0.8 percent above what I'm already grandfathered for which would give me a total number of 26.9%. 
um, for my uh, coverage on my lot. So I don't know where to go from. That's, that's basically what I'm looking for. OK. Well, we do have your application. So maybe we ought to simply give board members an opportunity to ask any questions that they might have. Okay. So we'll open it for questions. Questions from anyone? I have a few questions. If I may. Your intent is a one-story addition, is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, on your survey, if you would just clarify for me, the on the northern boundary of the survey, uh, the the property line is showed shown by a hatched line. I assume there. Are, Two additional reference lines above that, or are these simply, do these indicate anything other than distance markers on this? I assume this is the property line, is this correct? Maybe you're unaware. The hatched line is the property line, is that correct? correct? And the driveway on that side of the property is not on your property, is that correct? It is not. Okay. It is right on the property line, but it is not on our property. Okay. I assume those are just distance markers. Huh? I, I have a couple questions for Mr. Smith, if I may. This is a residential C, is that correct? That's correct, yes. Okay. The from what I can see, the addition of this porch does not encroach on any setbacks, no. side or rear. No. Okay. There, currently there is, just for clarification for the record, that's an elevated porch currently in existence. Is, is that correct? Yes, sir. You view that as, even though it is an elevated porch, you view that as impervious ground cover as is. Is that correct? I consider it as, in, in this particular case, it's, it's footprint. Sorry? It's footprint. Nothing to do with the impervious Foot, footprint. Regardless of whether it's elevated or not. So you're, you're, you're viewing the footprint now as, as ground coverage. That's correct. Of the port. If this is granted, it, is there any thing in the ordinance, any statement in the ordinance that would preclude a second floor of living space being an added to that some, by this or future owner in the presence? Is that no, because it, the, the maximum building coverage of 25 percent is, is based on footprint coverage. Okay, so, so the output expansion wouldn't make any difference. So a, uh, an addition above at some time would, would not affect the ordinance at all? That's correct. Okay, thank you. That's all I have. What about, um, would a porch then be, if he was to build a porch on the back of this addition? You couldn't do that without going back to the board for a variance to the lot okay. coverage again. Um, one thing that we consider when we're considering whether to grant a variance is we consider the properties surrounding this area. Have you done any work to explain I that? have, um, and there's um, three properties on the street that are over 25 percent. Okay. Out of um, 10 to 12 properties. Okay. But that's, that's part of what we're supposed to consider is right. those 10 to 12 properties. Are, right. Did you, do you have anything to let us know which of those properties? <clears throat> I can tell you which ones they are.
Do you want street addresses or um, the uh, survey numbers? Actually, both would probably be helpful. Okay. Uh, lot 19, 2 Elmwood Road is 29.28%. Lot 20, which is 4 Elmwood Road, is 28.9%. And lot number 27, which is 24 Elmwood Road, which is 26.7%. Now, did you go about ascertaining these figures? Um, I got them from the Code Enforcement Office, and I went to the tax card, is that, and then I added up all the, I got the size off of the map, and then I added up what was on the um, card, and then uh, did the percentage from there. Did you look at all at the houses on Forest Road behind you? I did. Um, OK. Um, 30 Forest, which is lot 52, is 26.1. And then one City View, which is just slightly behind there, that's lot uh, 54, is 26.73. Do you have any idea how your house compares in size to the other houses in your neighborhood? Um, what do you mean by that question, size? Well, I suppose uh, size in total square footage or total footprint, either one. Um, it seems that the other uh, houses in the neighborhood are all around the um, 19, 20, 23, there's a 16, 17 percent. So it's on, as far as square footage go, uh, footprint goes, it's on the high end. Also, it's on one of the smallest lots. The, you know, some of the people that are down around 17 and 19 are on much bigger lots. The houses are probably same size. Can you explain how this, um, why this addition couldn't be built and conform with the, the maximum building requirement? Um, at point, we're only, it's at 63 square feet, which is what we're grandfathered for. Um, the way that the back of the house is set up, it doesn't add. Um, it, we wanted to put a, a table in there, and it doesn't really add enough space to have a table and then to also have the rear uh, exit. And then the other thing is a monetary thing. Because it is so small, there is very little difference in the price between um, 110 square feet and the 63 square feet, because we're at the minimums for excavation and um, foundation work. It's going to cost us um, the same amount. What is the space going to be used for? Is it a kitchen? It is backs up to the back of our kitchen, and we are going to put the kitchen table in there so that the other the, the space that we're using for the kitchen table now would then become part of the larger family room. Is 
it sounds like you can't, I mean, obviously they can't build this any other way because any other location of the house because you're still, no matter where you put this. We only have 63 square feet, right. correct. How long have you lived at that property? Uh, six years. Six? Thank you. Bruce, did you discuss with Mr. Dorrance the significant economic injury portion of the yes the test he's aware of he's aware of that yes could you at all build if you built up on the house would that solve any of the problems Instead of going out, can you, I don't have a complete layout of the lower level of the home, but I'm, I'm just posing the question to you. Is there a way to build up to, as not to increase the square footprint? Um, that would add the square footage on the second floor, which um, would make the bedroom, the south facing bedroom larger, so it wouldn't give us another um, they wouldn't give us the extra room that we needed for the family room, which by moving the kitchen table out of the family room, it would go, we would then be able to use that space as part of the family room. So it would add it on the second floor, which is not part of the sort of quote unquote daily living space. Um, and I have a, I don't know if, if this was on there uh, in your package, but. You're unable to use the basement, you said, because it, um, the application indicated it was wet. It does get wet on heavy rain days. It will get uh, riblets of water. It's not like inches, but there are riblets of water through there. And it's also um, not sort of part of the, um, you know, kids aren't going to go down there, let's <laughs> put it that way, because everybody else is upstairs. Well, Mr. Torrance, what you're asking for is a pretty minimal variance. This, what is it, 0.8% Correct. of your overall square footage. But help me get there <laughs> um, I don't, I, with, I, with the portion of the statute that says, uh, uh, the portion of the ordinance that says that, that um, in order for us to grant the variance, we have to find that if we deny it, that you'll suffer significant economic injury, which means that we'll be denying you the opportunity to have a house that is comparable in size to those of other lot owners in your immediate neighborhood. I mean, will we in fact be denying you the opportunity to have a house that's comparable in size. No. I don't have, I have not met the requirements and Bruce had explained that to me. And we felt that it was, a, my wife and I felt it was such a small amount and we were very interested in doing it. And I'm, I can't say whether we would do it if it was only at 63 feet, if we could only do the 63 feet 
I felt it was worthwhile coming here to explain my predicament and just see what you had to say. And I don't know whether, you know, legally you can even change it or not. Um, I'm not sure how how much leeway there is there, but I don't have any, I don't have that reason that you just asked for. We would like to do this addition and it would make more sense to do it at 110 than it would be at 63. If we only get, if we, if it gets denied, we haven't decided whether we would build at 63 or just um, try something else with the current footprint that we have. Well, I appreciate your candor. <laughs> well, I have to offer. I, I can't. Um, I've been here and watched other people go through the motions, and it's it's uh, painful to watch it. So I I don't really. I mean, I don't have any way to twist it around. Um, I tried the ideas that Bruce has said, and I tried. Uh, I had an architect to talk to Bruce about it, and we haven't been able to figure out a way to do it. Well, we, we like to try and twist things when we can. But I'm not sure, well, we're being asked to really, to, to completely ignore one of the elements. I mean, the only thing I can say is there's one house that has, that is larger by two or three more percent, but that's only one out of the whole street. Yeah. So I wouldn't be the biggest house. And from the standpoint of most people would never even know, and I don't know whether this has any bearing on it, but I, you can't you wouldn't be able to see the addition from the street and the all the abutters have had no problem with it um, you know understanding given what I told them that we were only allowed 25 and I wanted to add this extra they obviously don't know all the other rules but they were there was no problem there and I have no doubt that that's true and it's clear from looking at the drawings that it's in the back of the house nobody would see it it's not an encroachment But the ordinance doesn't say that we can grant them if we think it's a good idea. Unfortunately, I don't. Ha I don't have a way around that. Uh, there, there's nothing I can do. To okay. Well, I don't have any other questions for Mr. Dorrance. Other questions? Okay, well, seeing no one else here to speak for or against, we will close the public comment portion of the hearing and open it for board discussion. And I'd be curious to hear if any other, if any board members have I just, an interesting I view of it. You said it correctly in that he's met other the other elements that there this is no fault of his own it's due to the circumstances of the property um, it wouldn't change the property or the neighborhood he's unable to to meet um, that last significant economic injury and that we can't we really have no way of comparing the other homes and other than what he has said in that he doesn't he would be one of the larger homes, um, if not, with the exception of that other one. And when you look at the ten surrounding properties, it clearly it doesn't meet that standard. Comments from the other end of the table?
but I'd like to add that it looks like a nice addition. If there's a way that it could be done, I would support that. Well, short of any other discussion, I suggest we go through the elements. Unless, Ms. Jordan, did you have some discussion issue to raise? No, I just kind of agree with you that it's, it's uh, a minor, um, minor, you know, 0.8% is small, but, you know, um, there's a way to do this without having to get a variance in, and that create a smaller addition. And uh, so I really need to think this through. So I guess going through the elements would work for me. OK. Um, those board members who find that there is no substantial departure from the intent of the ordinance, uh, a showing of hands. And that element is found in the affirmative, four in favor, zero opposed. Um, those who find that a literal, literal enforcement of the ordinance would cause a practical difficulty, as defined by 30-A, Main Revised Statutes Annotated, section 4353-4C. Um, and practical difficulty is defined as an occasion where the strict application of the ordinance to a property precludes the ability of the property owner to pursue a use permitted in the zoning district in which the property is located and results in significant economic injury to the property owner. Signif significant economic injury, in turn, is defined as placing the applicant for a variance at a disadvantage in the neighborhood by applying zoning ordinance standards which would prevent the applicant from having a structure or accessory structure comparable in size, location, and number to those of other lot owners in the immediate neighborhood, but in no case less than 10 of the nearest property owners. So a showing of hands of those board members who find that a literal enforcement of the ordinance would cause a practical difficulty. Opposed? Uh, that element fails by a vote of one in favor, uh, three opposed. Um, next, those who find that the need for a variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general circumstances of the neighborhood. And that is found in the affirmative, four in favor, zero opposed. Um, next, the grant, those who find that the granting of a variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not unreasonably detrimentally affect the use or market value of abutting properties. In determining whether a variance would have an unreasonable detrimental effect on the use or market value of abutting properties, the zoning board shall consider if the variance would have the effect of blocking an established view, posing a fire safety hazard, casting a shadow on an adjoining lot, reducing the appraised value of an adjoining property by 10% or more, or of eliminating the privacy of an adjoining property without an effort to mitigate the lost privacy. Um, and a showing of hands on that element. Those in favor? That is found in the affirmative. Four in favor. Zero opposed. Um, next, those who find that the practical difficulty is not the result of action taken by the applicant or a prior owner. And that is found in the affirmative. Four in favor, zero opposed. Um, next, uh, those who find that no other feasible alternative to a variance is available to the petitioner. Opposed? You yeah, voted in the no, affirmative no, on that, or? No, I'm not. Okay, so that is. Okay, uh, so one in favor, three opposed on that element. 
Uh, next, those who find that the granting of a variance will not unreasonably adversely affect the natural environment. And that is found in the affirmative, four in favor, zero opposed. And last, those who find that the property is not located in whole or in part within shoreland areas as described in Title 38, Section 435. And that is found in the affirmative, four in favor, zero opposed. Um, we should have a motion from someone. It should be an affirmative motion uh, to approve uh, the variance application. Um, and then we'll vote on it as a whole. Um, if someone would make a motion to approve the application of Scott and Lori Dorrance for a variance from the strict application of the zoning ordinance requirement of section 19-4-3 for a variance of 1.9% from the allowable 25% maximum building coverage to construct a 110 square foot addition on the property at 10 Elmwood Road tax map U03 lot 22. Would someone make such a motion? Uh, move, motion, Ms. Miller. Um, a second from someone? I'll second it. Ms. Jordan? Uh, discussion on the motion. In light of the fact that we have, that we failed to approve two of the necessary elements, um, we voted down by a vote of one in favor, three opposed, the element of practical difficulty, and voted down by a vote of one in favor, three, three opposed, the element of no other feasible alternative to a variance. Um, it seems to me that the motion can't carry. So unless there's any other discussion on the motion, all those in favor? All those opposed? And the motion fails uh, by a vote of uh, zero in favor, uh, four opposed. So the application does is denied. You're welcome. But I'm sorry okay. that, that we had to do that. Um, sometimes we are simply constrained by by the terms of the ordinance, um, which seems to sometimes fly in the face of common sense. Um, but unfortunately, like I said, we're not left with, with an element of do we think it's a good thing um, or do we think it sounds. I said, unfortunately, the ordinance doesn't leave us the leeway of ignoring the ordinance. We think it's a good idea. There will be no other new business. The next item on the agenda is communications. Do we have any? No, I have none. We have a motion for adjournment. I motion to adjourn. Motion, Ms. Jordan. A second. Ms. Miller, all those in favor? We are adjourned. <laughs>